Well, just asked me if I could do uh, a little talk about the uh, car paint node. So, this is what it does. Any questions? <laughs> it does more than car paint too. It also does nice wood. So Jen wanted me to show you my wood today, so. <laughs> I'm glad you made the right choice. Yeah. So that, that's uh, a nice little um, wood surface. There's a couple of different bump layers. You got the, the wood bump in here, and then you also have a smooth reflection. And it's all done with one node. Well, plus textures. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, my icon's moved. So just load in a simple scene. Oops, try that again. <coughs> this is like one of my most used scene ever. Turn on uh, BPR. Open up surface editor. Smooth ball. Turn on nodes. And Go down to materials, and there's the car paint node. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, um, it's a, a fun little node. There's a fair amount, but you break it down, it's basically uh, three different uh, settings in here. You have your main surfacing uh, or color uh, settings here. So this does most of the work right here. Then you have a secondary reflection uh, area right here for clear coat. So basically, you know, you think you take a, like a rough surface, you cover it with uh, a liquid, and let that liquid harden. You get a nice smooth surface, but you can still see the roughness underneath. That's what uh, this simulates. So you get actually two specularity controls: one for your paint, and one for your clear coat. And then they've added a new texture, which you might have also noticed if you're using nose. Is you go down to 3D textures. You have flakes, which is actually the same texture that you're seeing here, but it's just been brought out so you can use it for other things. So this is a, a case where a texture came out of a, a larger node. And again, it's got its own bumps, which actually get uh, applied underneath the clear coat. Clear coat's always on the top. And this gives you uh, different colors, and it just gives you those nice little metal uh, flakes that you get in uh, metallic paints. So I'm going to plug this in to material. And that's just the default settings, and it looks pretty nice. I'm going to turn off flakes for now, and we'll just work with a few things. So right now I'm not using any clear coat. I'm going to turn off uh, specularity. So now we have a very you know, simple ball. And, uh, whoops. <coughs> this is your standard color, which is you know, your base uh, color of your, for your um, texture. You can put an image, textures, whatever you want, can go into this little red dot here, which is what I did with the uh, wood surface. I just had a nice little wood grain surface I put in there. So let's try that. I'll just add in a, um, an image node for now. Load an image. Let's go to uh, <coughs> images. Just take a simple light wood texture. Spherical map this thing. And I'm going to throw this into diffuse. When you're using <coughs> materials, whenever you have that little line connected here, it overrides everything here except bumps. Bumps always work. 
So this is just the raw color that I'm throwing in for, with this image node. Just do a couple tiles on that. And maybe rotate this thing so we get rid of that ugly seam. Keep going. Get. Don't need an envelope. I'll try 90. Here we go. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> okay, so you'll notice that those colors are exactly the same as what you see here. There's no shading being applied to this thing at all. Uh, if I plug this into color, now you see the shading. It's actually being affected by lights. So this is a little technique of just throwing uh, any texture directly into diffuse shading is a great way of seeing exactly what your texture is doing without any lights or shadows getting in the way of anything. Yeah, it's like you can throw in uh, alphas or you know the luminosity of this thing, so you see the grayscale, you know, just the raw colors right there. I asked a dumb question. Okay. When you, <laughs> when you went from the image to the diffuse, it, from here to here. Yeah. Why is it why is it showing up in color in diffuse shading? Shouldn't diffuse show shading is showing you everything without any shading applied. So um, whenever you're you know, doing anything like, uh, let's go back to a little um, shader here. Like normally LightWave calculates everything using uh, the Lambert shader. So when you're doing your surfacing up here or you plug anything in here, it's the same as doing it like this. I can throw that over there. Now it's calculating all the, you know, the, the shading of this uh, object. Uh, you also have specular shading, reflection shading, and refraction shading. These are all color inputs because of the red dot. So you can actually have you know, a different colored specular highlight than you do from the uh, surface colors. And it can also be different for the reflection colors. And your refraction can also be tinted a different color again. So you can have a, like a, a white ball. Okay, ice is getting unruly. So you can have a white ball with a red highlight. And that's you know a fairly easy thing to do, but you can also uh, overlay different uh, shaders. Like you can have like two specular highlights, one you know, a very soft like a yellow highlight around a smaller white one. And you can add those together. But you know it's actually grouping a whole bunch of stuff. Like diffuse shading takes over color, luminosity, and diffuse. And when you plug any colors directly into this, you're seeing the raw color, which is also the same as turning. Luminosity to 100% and diffuse to zero. So if I take this, throw it in here, I'm getting the same thing now. If I take the color and plug it down here, um, Lightwave 10 has a little bug there. So that's diffuse shading, but VPR likes to render the luminosity, whether it's supposed to or not. I plug this in here, render that. And there's no difference between the two. So basically, you know, anything going to diffuse shading, it's going to calculate its own shading. But since I didn't tell it to calculate any shading, it renders just the raw colors. When you throw a shader in, that's when you're going to get that stuff. Turn that off again. And you can play around your shading in here through the use of uh, functions. So you might notice this thing doesn't have any like you know um, diffuse sharpness control, and this won't affect anything in here. But I can tweak it with a function, increase that little curve, and you see that terminator sharpens up. Or I can pull it back the other way and really soften that highlight. And something like that would be pretty good for a wood. Um, another one that actually works even better is a shader called Oranair and Minert. I like to use Oranair for wood. Uh, Minert's really good for more of a, a grainy material. I'm just going to render a frame. 
turn that down to zero. And now I'm going to increase the roughness to say 50. And then flip back and forth between the two, and you see that little shading difference. That has a more of a velvety look to it. Uh, more of an even lighting that you normally get with uh, wood because it's got all the, these little tiny holes and fibers. Uh, thought they had that in here. No, they don't. Okay, some of the materials actually have an Oranayer checkbox, so you can switch between a regular Lambert shading and the uh, nicer uh, Lambert. And I thought car paint had it, but it doesn't. But just take that out and reconnect this. So it doesn't look much different from the standard uh, Lambert shaded model so far. Um, let's see. We have a roughness control, which isn't going to do a whole lot right now because we don't have any uh, specularity. So I'm going to add that right now. Say, um, make it 80%. Whoops. Okay, now we got a little reflection there. So it's a very reflective uh, ball. I'm going to take that down to zero. So you can see some of the wood texture, but it's mostly a mirror right now. Uh, so this is your standard specularity. It's kind of like using specularity right here, but it uh, does both your reflections and your specularity. That's badly named. That should be paint reflection. And then you have paint roughness, where if you slowly increase that, you notice that hot reflection of the light and everything is getting a little bit blurrier. I'm going to take the, uh, the wood texture out of there for now and just make this a nice black ball. Okay, make it silver. As we increase that, yeah, all the reflections really get smeared. So now we have basically a nice sanded uh, aluminum ball. So the wood back in there, it's still showing through a little bit. Um, this little paint specular control here decides whether you're going to use your specular color or your paint color. So right now I'm saying, um, to use one, now I'm going to use the other. So that is actually showing the entire specular color itself. That's what I should have done in the first place, but <coughs> if I make this... So I make this uh, black color, I'm still getting a nice white uh, reflection, because that's what I said. If I change the color of this, I'm getting all these nice little metallic looking uh, colored colors. Bring this back down and it's going to do a blend between the two. So there's a 50% blend between black. So if I make that red and that green, we're going to get kind of a yellowish color for all your highlights. I'm going to bring that roughness back down a bit. So there's a nice yellow sun shining on this. Bring this all the way down to zero. And there's the green color. There's the red color. So you can blend these together any way you want because everything's got an input and it can be enveloped. So a nice little trick is to go into your math because you know they kept saying you don't need to use math for, vector, um, for nodes, but it comes in handy. So a little Fresnel node. I can plug that into this paint and specular. And as soon as I do that, because this is showing black, it's basically turned this down to zero. I'm going to give this uh, refraction index a 1.2. Okay, try 1.5. And now you can see it's changing to the red along the edge here. <coughs> 